welcome friends to this session on induction meeting session prior to the start of online counseling for pgd cft and msc cft program uh, and the uh, ignu regional center coach is same as that of pgd cft so these two programs are covered in this online counseling session and uh, a special welcome to professor neeraja charja and uh, uh, professor ratra who are program coordinators for the, the msc cft program at socge igno headquarters they are kind enough to in, the, in two three minutes with this brief introduction of how to study with igno from uh, by dr prasita unikrishna the main aim of this induction program is that you will know what to do and how to do however you will be remembering that the entire process of studying is more like so slightly so the slow and steady is always going to reach the target and it is not how uh, fast you do it or the finish line and also friends please remember the, uh, the speed at which you start also uh, will help you to overcome the challenges that's why we have the minimum period of study and maximum period of study in uh, indira gandhi national open university and we welcome once again to this induction meeting session for specifically for the msc cft and pgd cft pro students for the july 2022 session and over to dr prasita unnikrishnan uh, assistant director igno regional center coach who will be sharing about how to study with igno thank you dorothy madam just give me a few minute i'll just upload my ppt is it visible to all of you we are clearly visible yes. yes thank you thank you so on behalf of all at igno regional center kochi myself dr prasita unnikrishnan warmly welcome each one of you to this uh, centralized induction meeting i must say uh, for the pgd cft and msc cft learners so i am sure uh, uh, the students of the july 2022 admission cycle have a basic idea about igno uh, but before starting my presentation on how to study with igno i would just like to give a basic few information about igno the basic objectives and the features of igno as you all may be knowing indira gandhi national open university is one of the largest open universities in the world and it is a uh, it is a central open university which was established way back in the year 1985 uh the basic objective of igno in fact was to promote the educational well being of the community and to reach out to the unreached in fact uh, igno offers a wide range of academic programs at affordable cost and uh, uh, igno flexibility is always there in terms of space and duration of study just uh, for example in case of uh, msc cft students itself uh, the minimum duration is 2 uh, years and the maximum you can complete your program um, in a duration of 4 years uh, so that is the maximum duration of study there is some interruption i i i request all learners to kindly unmute their mic there is some interruption it seems to me thank you thank you so much 
So the flexibility uh, has to be there in terms of place, space, and the duration of study. Before I go into the actual uh, nitty gritties of how to study with IGNO, our students should also be aware about the achievements of IGNO because tomorrow when you complete your program from IGNO, at least uh, our students should have a basic idea of what IGNO has achieved and uh, as an alma mater. So IGNO has, rec has been recognized as a center of excellence in distance education by the Commonwealth of Learning in the year 1993. IGNO has also been awarded the Award of Excellence for Distance Education Material by the Commonwealth of Learning in the year 1999. UNESCO has also declared IGNO as the largest institution of higher learning in the world in the year 2010. And IGNO has also one of the largest network of su uh, learning support system. And very recently, IGNO was also accredited with NAC A++ in the year 2021. So these are some of the achievements of IGNO, which our dear learners must be knowing. So now I come to my topic as to how uh, you can study with IGNO. First and foremost, being an IGNO learner, you should be knowing your deadlines. By deadlines, I mean that uh, every uh, like you should be knowing when you have to submit your assignments you should be knowing when you have to submit your form examination form now supposing if uh, you are students of july 2022 admission cycle you need to know that your assignments have to if you and if you are interested in uh, writing your term and examinations in the year of june 2022 you should be writing uh, you should be uh, submitting your examination form where, as and when the link opens in the month of April or May. So uh, that deadline you should be uh, aware about as an IGNO student. Also, you should be aware that uh, your assignment questions have to be downloaded from the website uh, and has to be written and submitted at your study center, uh, maybe by end of a uh, March and by end of April, if you have to write your examinations in June 2023. So these are some of the deadlines which you as an IGNO students need to be aware about. Secondly, uh, you should also be aware about the rules of IGNO because IGNO has certain rules and uh, rules which every IGNO student needs to follow. The rules are easily available in the IGNO common prospectus. If you go through the first few pages, you will be aware about the basic rules of IGNO, like how you should be uh, applying to the examinations, how you should be uh, downloading the assignment questions and what are the criteria you have to uh, keep in mind. Pro requisite is that you should be applying for your examinations online you should be whichever course codes you are application you should be uh, right you should be applying online through uh, the online examination link for the writing your examinations similarly as a prerequisite for attempting your examination you are supposed to submit your assignments so submit your assignments maybe online or through even through hard copy uh, you can uh, you you have to submit at your study center so that is also one prerequisites which you as an igno learner should be knowing then you have independent learning igno as i said it's more of self study wherein you have the flexibility to complete your uh, program at your own pace within the maximum validity period so here it's uh, uh, when you compare it to a regular system it's not like a regular system wherein there is a teacher guiding you on every aspect uh, here it is more of an independent learning wherein the student has to be motivated himself or herself to complete your program so self-motivation i must say is the key to being an igno learner and uh, uh, the students uh, have to be more of an independent learner that rather than being dependent on a, a counselor or a teacher for completion of his or her program. 
and next is the self-faced so self-faced means uh, you you are a ignore learner means you have many other commitments apart from your study like you have family commitments uh, you have some official commitments so uh, it is you who can best decide how you can complete your program within that maximum validity period so uh, as a, as for msc cft learners the minimum validity minimum period is 2 years and maximum is 4 years so you have the uh, you can pace your study according to your requirements because many a times due to some personal commitments uh, he or she may not be able to uh, uh, write your examinations within that uh, limited two years of time so they have the flexibility to complete his or her program in that maximum validity period so it is morely more uh, we can say it is self-faced next i would like to uh, also inform you about the induction guidelines which has been already prepared for the july 2022 admission cycle it's already available on the regional center coaching website students uh, it's a uh, 12 it's a uh, it's an 12 page booklet which we have prepared and the last four pages are exclusively devoted about the e-support services of igno so students who are interested can definitely go through our induction guidelines because whatever we are communicating to our students here in this induction meeting has already been written and shared in this induction guidelines so i request all the learners who are giving this session to kindly uh, log in to our regional center coaching website our induction guidelines for the uh, for the july 2022 admission cycle is already uploaded on the rc coaching website students are requested to kindly view this and uh, understand the nitty gritties of how to uh, study effectively with igno next you can also go through the program guide of your msc cft program as this would uh, be a basic guide and enable you to complete your program successfully from igno also there are self check exercises uh, at the end of each unit of your study materials so as an igno learner you should try to understand the chapters or understand the units uh, and then try to attempt the self check exercises while you are studying the study materials the assignment questions uh, whenever a student attempts the assignment questions it's not simply copying the answers from the study material but you have to understand the questions from your own perspective and you have to try to answer it in your own perspective uh, instead of just copying it from the study materials for that you can also refer uh, your other um, materials which are available in e course or even also there are so many reference materials available in google as well so these assignment questions have to have a basic understand you need to have a basic understanding about the subject and hence you should study it thoroughly before answering the assignment questions and also the old question papers give you a basic idea as to how the questions are being asked so you will also get an idea uh, as to the trend of questions which are being asked and the uh, topics uh, which are seemingly more important uh, uh, while studying your course so old question papers in fact act as a basis wherein it said that you should at least solve at least last five years question papers so this will give you a basic idea about the questions being asked so these are some of the uh, uh, viewpoints on how a learner can effectively study with igno so i'm sure you would have got a basic idea about the uh, nitty gritties of studying your program uh, so next uh, this through this uh, basic idea next i would like to request my colleague mrs sujini babu to kindly delve on the topic significance of enrollment number difference between fresh admission and re-registration she would also be explaining about the mixed minimum and maximum period of study and she would also be delving upon the youtube channel of igno regional center coaching and also the uh, playlist which is available for the msc cft and pgd cft program i wholeheartedly welcome my colleague miss sujini babu thank you uh, thank you ma'am Uh, a very warm good morning to one and all. My name is Sujini Babu. Today I will be sharing some details on significance of enrollment number allotted to you by the university. Uh, 
uh, difference between fresh admission and re-registration, minimum and maximum period of study, that is validity of your registration. So I will start with difference between program, uh, sorry, significance of your enrollment number. <clears throat> what is your enrollment number? Uh, where you can find your enrollment number? I will explain. Once you submit your online application form for your admission and your admission is confirmed, you will be allotted with a unique number, which is the enrollment number. The enrollment number has 10 digits. The university identify the student by the enrollment number. Therefore, it is mandatory to mention your enrollment number while you communicate with the university regarding your program. Enrollment number is mentioned in your uh, university identity card, which can be downloaded from IGNO website. Uh, next is uh, difference between fresh admission and re-registration. So, uh, difference between uh, program code and course code, because it is important that you should know your program code and course code of a program. Program code is the uh, short form of program you have registered with IGNO. In your case, you are, uh, you are a student of postgraduate diploma in counseling and family therapy, uh, or master of science in counseling and family therapy. The program code for postgraduate diploma in counseling and family therapy is PGD CFT. And the program code for master, uh, master of science in counseling and family therapy is MSC CFT. Now we will come to the course code, the subject, the course of which or the course of which uh, each program has course codes. If you go through your program guide, which you have received along with your study materials, you can see your course codes. Example, um, uh, in your case, MCFT1, MCFT2, MCFT3, all these are course codes. Each course code has its course title. For example, M MCFT1. The uh, course title is Human Development and Family Relationships. In the same way, MCFT2, Mental Health and Disorders. MCFT3, Counseling and Family Therapy. So I will uh, go to the next point. Now, what is the difference between fresh admission and re-registration? When you register with IGNO for the first time, either in first semester or first year for any program is on offer is called fresh admission. Whereas re-registration is when you register for second semester or second year after an year of completion of your first semester or second semester. It is not mandatory that uh, you have to complete all components of your first year or first semester for re-registering your second year or second semester. University has made it convenient to the student to take fresh admission and also take pre-registration through online from the IGNO website, www.igno.ac.in. Another point you should know is a maximum period to complete the program. What does it mean? It indicates the validity of registration. Each program offered by the university has its minimum and maximum period of study to facilitate flexible way. It is very important that the learner is well aware of the validity period of your registration. There were instances like the student submitting the project report or dissertation after expiry of the validity of registration. And the results of the same will, uh, will be withheld by the university. So to know your registration validity, you may visit IGNO website. Uh, as I already said, www.igno.ac.in. In case of MSc CFT, minimum validity of your program is two years from your registration. Maximum period you will get to complete the program is four years. Beyond that, you will not be allowed to uh, do the program. Student has the choice to complete the program either within the minimum or maximum period of validity. Uh, Dear learners, we keep our website updated with all this information. IGNO main website is www.igno.ac.in. Uh, our regional center has own website that is rccochin.igno.ac.in. 
Regional Center Cochin has a YouTube channel also where the recorded videos of online counseling and various events held at RC Cochin are available. So you can just uh, Google Ignore Regional Center Cochin YouTube, then go to playlist. Uh, to watch uh, online counseling videos, you select MSC CFT online counseling. Then again, go to playlist of MSC CFT. There you will find all the recorded videos of online counseling for various courses of MSC CFT program. We are also available in Regional Center Cochin uh, Facebook page and Twitter account. Uh, dear friends, hope uh, all you have got an idea about your program, enrollment number, study center, and variety of your registration. So that brings me uh, to the end of my session. Thank you all. Uh, next, uh, I request <coughs> uh, Professor uh, Nirda Chadha, ma'am, uh, to deliver the uh, next session. Thank you. Namaskar, uh, and congratulations to Dr. Dorothy and the uh, team RC Cochin on this wonderful proactive initiative. Greetings also to the regional directors of other regions and the teams involved with these programs in those regions. And yes, greetings, dear learners. Welcome to PGD CFT and MSC CFT. Uh, to begin the discussion on these programs, I hand over to Professor Amiteshwar Ratra. Both I and Professor Amiteshwar Ratra are coordinators of this program of study. So she will initiate the discussion on these programs. Professor Amiteshwar Ratra. Yeah, thank you, Professor Nietzsche Sarda. Uh, hello, everyone at RC Cochin and everyone online from various regional centers and all the students present for MSc CFT. So thank you, RC Cochin team, uh, Dr. Dorothy and her team for this initiative. So uh, as I understand, I was listening to the previous uh, speakers, the, both the ARDs from the RC coaching. So you are now the students aware about your registration and how to get the assignments and question papers. Now we come over to uh, our program of study, MSc CFT and PGD CFT. So these programs were uh, made to, uh, you know, to make an initiative movement from negativity to positivity as we understand understand our society at the moment is uh, in a lot of stresses we all personally also are in a lot of stresses and the moment we are not able to cope up with these stresses leads to the need and requirement of the counseling and at times family therapy we are all uh, the salient features for these program is that they focus on the applied aspects the thirst is on the opportunities for hands-on experience Supervised practicum is mandatory. And in the second year of MSc counseling and family therapy, the learners have to work on their dissertations as well as do and undergo a rigorous internship. MSc CFT and PGD CFT are modular programs. And uh, MSc CFT also provides the opportunity to specialize in the second year in child and adolescent counseling and family therapy, marital and family therapy and counseling, substance abuse counseling and family therapy. So we also have the exit option for MSc CFT, as we say, MSc CFT and PGT CFT are modular programs. So if you are able, you join in MSc CFT and for some reason you are not able to complete uh, the whole program of MSc CFT, but have completed the first year of MSc CFT uh, uh, theories and practicals all, then you can uh, exit from MSc CFT with PGD CFT. And similarly, if you have joined in as a PGD CFT learner and now you want to uh, uh, you are more interested to go in for the second year so after successfully completing that means uh, your, your grade card should show the full completion of MSc uh, sorry PGD CFT program and then you can join in for the MSc CFT program so uh, uh, the credit uh, maximum duration and minimum duration was all emphasized by previous speakers I also emphasize over here that for MSc CFT we have two years of um, minimum period and the maximum period is four years for PGD CFT it is minimum one year and maximum three years one should remember that uh, the 
the norms for uh, IGNU are followed through UGC. So UGC has now uh, uh, not uh, allowed any more further extension of these uh, maximum time periods. So please remember that whatever might have happened in earlier years, your maximum period, your registration period will be over by four years. And if you are not able to complete the program of study within this time, then uh, you will uh, your whole payment and the whole uh, efforts would go wasted. So always keep some extra time with you. Don't keep yourself for the last uh, uh, exam that you will finish it in the last exam. Please keep yourself some time period and keep a photocopy of all the material that you submit to IGNU. And OK, the credits for our program for MSc CFT would be 64 and PGD CFT 32. Credit in uh, our IGNU parlance is uh, one credit is equal to 30 hours. So nearly uh, this much work you are expected to do at present. I request Professor Nija Jada to take over for the program structure and details of uh, our programs. Thank you, uh, Professor Amiteshwar. Professor Nija Chadda, please. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Amiteshwar. Uh, now I come to the program structure. As Professor Amiteshwar just mentioned, PGD CFT is the same as the first year of MSc CFT. So the course material is identical. The assignments are identical. The exams are the same. And that also, therefore, allows for the mobility that Professor Amiteshwar just described. Now, in PGD CFT, which is, again, the same as first year of MSc CFT, you have 11 courses. There are five theory courses. There are six supervised practicum courses. So when Professor Amiteshwar mentioned that there is a thrust on the applied aspect, now you can see its manifestation. You might find doing so many practical studies, but believe the experts in the field who insist that, and we are all uh, intuitively also aware of this, that counseling and family therapy is something which is hands-on. You can't just read about it and be a good counselor or a good family therapist. After all, you have joined this program of study to be in this helping profession, to help others in distress. So, any basic thing that you would need to do would require not just the knowledge and understanding uh, of the relevant concepts, but also the corresponding skill set, the corresponding sensitivity and attitude, uh, mental makeup. Therefore, you find uh, there is a supervised practicum course corresponding to each theory course. And our advice is that as you go through the theory blocks, try and do the corresponding practical activities alongside. Let me give an example. The very first course, MCFT001, is Human Development and Family Relationships. The corresponding supervised practicum course is MCFTL001, that is Human Development and Family Relationships Supervised Practicum. Now, in the theory course, you will learn about various stages of the lifespan, not just the individual lifespan, but also the family lifespan, because an individual doesn't grow up, a child doesn't grow up in isolation. The child grows up in the family setup by and large, and a lot of strengths are derived from it. And when that individual is going through any time of distress, you do need to involve the family in providing the support. For instance, suppose an old person is depressed. Now, it just won't do to counsel that old person and say, believe in spirituality now, give up your expectations from your family members. Ideally, you have to get to the root cause. So you would also need to involve the family members. And there needs to be an improvement in the interrelationships, communication patterns, some the family members will need to find time to spend uh, with this old family member, involve the old family member in whatever activities uh, that they engage in. And you have then addressed the root cause. Otherwise, if there are basic issues in the family interrelationships, you will find 
some, I mean, wherever, like if there is a lava underlying the surface of the earth, any weak spot, weak spot, and that lava will spurt out. So the index patient, which is what we call the person, uh, the family member showing symptoms, is just a manifestation of some turbulence that is underlying, that is often the case. So coming back to it, if you would need to make intervention, you would also need to then know the background information. For instance, you are to uh, intervene in the context of an adolescent showing uh, behavioral problems, conduct disorder, substance abuse. Some basic information would be required. You would need to know about the common issues and challenges faced by families with teenagers. You will not need to know about the developmental milestones during the adolescent period. What are the important influences during this period, whether it, how salient, for instance, the peer group becomes in this age group. So if you're reading the unit on families with teenagers and you also alongside do the practical, which will require you to interview a teenager and also interact, uh, conduct interviews with the family members, then all the concepts that are explained therein will become clearer. Very often we now brand um, preschoolers as hyperactive ADHD. Very often it could also be that the, there are um, problems in the family with milieu, marital conflict, domestic violence, which are impacting the child, which is getting reflected in um, um, what we could call problem behavior. So it could be of something needing uh, medical intervention, but very often that needs to be supplemented and complemented by counseling and family therapy inputs also. So suppose you're reading the unit on families with preschoolers. So there you read uh, preschoolers are egocentric. Now, one thing would be if you're just reading the theory blog, you will mug up the definition of egocentrism, that the child is unable to see the perspective of other persons, can only see things from his or her own perspective. But suppose you step out and do the corresponding practical activity, wherein you would need to conduct activities with the child, the specified activities, and also interact with the family members. So all the theory concepts that are relevant, the milestones, again, the issues and challenges faced by the family with preschoolers become then clearer. So you wouldn't need to mug up. Knowledge will turn into understanding and that understanding would seep in, in terms of clarity, even about the applied aspects. So please go through the theory content and to the extent possible, do the practical activities alongside. So there are various uh, courses. You have the first course we discussed, human development and family relationships. Course two is on mental health and disorders. Here you'll be reading about the various disorders and the activities correspond to uh, in the practical course, case history taking and mental status examination. Course three, MCFT 003 is on counseling and family therapy, basic concepts and theoretical perspectives. Course four is on counseling and family therapy, applied aspects. And course five is on counseling and family therapy, research methods and statistics. These are the five theory courses and each theory course has a supervised practicum counterpart. And then there is another practical course that is the reflective journal. Now, in the field of counseling and family therapy, reflection is very, very important. Reflection on how the session went, reflection on the issues being faced uh, by the person you're trying to help, and also reflection on the interventions that you are trying to make. So am I being uh, judgmental? Am I being biased? Let's say if it's a teenager who had come to you with who had been brought by the parents that this child has conduct disorder, doesn't listen, beats other issues. You probably also are a parent and immediately you side with the parents. Is that okay? Don't you need to see things from that teenager's perspective also? What is leading to these issues? So suppose a young man again, like another person comes to you and uh, he says, I'm gay and I'm facing issues and coming out. Now, again, uh, with the traditional mindset, one would think what, but that will not do. You, as a professional counselor, as a family therapist, you need to ensure that you do give 
the person you're trying to help positive regard. You do try to th see things from that person's perspective and not let your biases creep into the helping process. So uh, sensitizing you to reflection, this reflective journal would require you to engage in multiple activities that involve reflection. Now, all these 11 courses are compulsory. You need to clear all these courses in order to complete the diploma or the first year of MSc CFT. Uh, in the second year of MSc CFT, you will have applied social psychology as a course, counseling and family therapy, applications and interventions as a course. These two are compulsory theory courses and once again, they have their supervised practical counterpart. Then there are three sets of electives. You could choose to specialize in the electives that Professor Viteshun mentioned. You'll be taking up the theory course of that and the corresponding supervised practicum course. And you will be needing to complete internship and dissertation, uh, which are again compulsory. Now, for each theory course, you would need to submit the assignment for the course by the stipulated last date if you need want to appear for the term and the coming term and exam. So for instance, if you you're enrolled for July 2022 session, which means the first time you may appear for the term and exam is in June 23. Now, if you want to appear for these 30 exams for these five 30 courses, whichever course it could be one, it could be all any number that you decide. It will be essential that you submit the assignment for that course within the last date. The last date is mentioned in the assignment booklet. But at the same time, if the university announces an extension of that last date, then that will apply to PGD CFT and MSc CFT assignments and practical files also. So this is for clearing the theory courses, one assignment and clearing the uh, clear, com uh, successfully completing the assignment and attempting and successfully clearing the term and exam for the course. For the six supervised practicum courses, there is no assignment and there is no exam, not even the term and exam. In these uh, supervised practicum courses, for each course, you have a supervised practicum manual. The activities to be done and how they are to be recorded is given in detail in each manual. What is required is that you would be doing all the activities and then write out and submit the best three, your best three attempts for evaluation. Now, till June 2023, the facilitative guidelines are in force. They are in effect. So that gives you an open choice. For instance, in each manual, in the six courses, you have, let's say, eight to 12 activities that need to be done. You may submit any three in each course for clearing the course. If you are unable to submit by the June 23 deadline and submit subsequently, then you will have to follow what is stipulated in the manual where there is internal choice. You still have to do uh, all, uh, all the activities but submit any three as per the internal choice given in the manuals. Please do remember that this is supervised practicum. So you would need to do it under the guidance of the academic counselor for the course, which is necessary. You can't be uh, learning skills because thereafter uh, you would be working actually. So the required skills have to be learned in the correct manner under the guidance and you will need that help from the academic counselor and you will find that it works well for instance in course one human development and family relationships where you have to interview people interview families basically without um, any issues so see the importance you have to learn how to form a rapport with individuals and families from different backgrounds at different ages of different kinds to be then able to intervene those who are distressed. If you are unable to form a rapport with a so-called normal child, not clinically uh, facing any issues, how will you intervene and help a child who is withdrawn, who is depressed, who is anxious, 
which given the COVID pandemic era now is become a problem even in the case of young children. So uh, coming back to the practical activities, what you will need to do is let's say, prepare the interview schedule for the first activity. Show it to your academic counselor, get tips. What is the wording okay? Is this question a bit awkward? Should you ask questions for this domain also? How do you form a rapport? Any tips? So that kind of a thing. And then you will be conducting that activity in the field. You could, let's say, if you want to uh, interview a primary school going child, you could interact with the child in your neighborhood, in your community, community. There's no restriction. There is no lab requirement for any of the supervised practicum courses. You will basically see guidance from your academic counselor and step out in the field and do the activity. Now, after doing the activity, you will take down notes, for instance, the responses of the participant. So you could jot down the responses or you could record those. Please do remember that when you prepare your practical file, it will not only include the detailed reports of three activities, but also this rough notes material or if you have recorded the um, interview, then the recording of the same. I'll tell you why. This is because in the case of supervised practicum, 50% weightage is for the marks which your academic counselor has given on the basis of your interaction with uh, the academic counselor and the reports that you have submitted. That academic counselor has seen you work, has participated in the discussions with you. So the, that academic counselor, that expert would probably know your commitment, your hard work, how much you're learning from it, how much you understood and so on. But the external evaluator, because once your file is complete, the three practical reports are there. These have been internally assessed, authenticated by your study center. Now it is ready to be submitted for external evaluation. So for that, you will be submitting your file at the student evaluation division. You could speed post it, submit by hand, whatever mode you prefer. Now the student evaluation division then sent these files for external evaluation to the panel, anyone from their panel of evaluators. Now that external evaluator has nothing to go by except that file in front of him or her. So the detail, the analytical approach, you're being able to link the practical with the theory that you've learned and so on, is what would obviously then influence the marks you would get. Similarly, in second year for dissertation and internship also, you would need to work under a counselor for these courses. And now I think I'll conclude uh, my presentation. If there are any questions, I'd be wel we'll welcome those questions. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Yeah, if you want to appear in the month of June exam, uh, do we need to complete the, this uh, practicum also before the June? See, uh, while we do recommend that you do the practical activities correspondingly, the completion of each theory and each practical course is independent. They have their separate course codes. So in a way, you could, let's say, uh, complete your uh, and submit your theory assignment for a course, let's say MCFT 001 and you've done some activities, but you haven't completed and you will not be able to submit by the deadline for the June 23 exam, that's okay. You can appear and clear a theory course without submitting the practical file of the corresponding practical course. Conversely, you can complete, suppose you've done all the activities of MCFTL 001, prepared the file, got it evaluated, submitted. And yet for some reason, when the exam time comes, you are not able to appear for the exam for the theory course. That's OK. Each component is separate and the credit gets stored. So you can appear for the th clear a theory course without doing the supervised practicum part alongside completing it. And conversely, you can successfully complete a supervised practicum course because you read through the theory, you understood, but you couldn't appear for the exam. So technically, it's not complete. But you've already, uh, you're ready with the supervised practicum course. You can go ahead and complete that. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Good yeah, afternoon, ma'am. Is there any study under RC, RC Cochin? I would request uh, RC Cochin to answer this question. Uh, 
Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I have a question. Like, I got the mail from my RD that they are they are organizing some practical counseling and something like that from first of February. They have organized. I couldn't attend it due to some issues, but I just wanted to know that what will happen here. They are being do uh, make us do the practicals and they will supervise us in the practicals or what they will do. Because when I tried to contact them, they didn't answer me properly. That what will happen? See, the delivery of the programs is decentralized. Professor Mitheshwara. Ratra and I designed and developed these programs. But uh, yeah. when it comes now to help you finish, it is the regional centers. And more than that, the nodal point for you is your study center. So anything to do with the counseling sessions, for instance, the problem that you've cited, you will need to get back uh, to your uh, study center because it is better that when you follow your shed, uh, the schedule Otherwise, request them, explain why you couldn't attend, and uh, have a, an academic counselor assigned to you. Because uh, uh, attending the theory counseling sessions is optional, though we do recommend that you attend the sessions because it helps you keep pace. It helps you as you uh, hear other students ask their questions, and those clarifications help you also. And it does away with the sense of isolation that a distant learner at times faces. So keep in touch with your peer group. That will help you. But academic counseling for the supervised practicum is essential. And there is a built-in element that these are individualized. So even if uh, the study center, let's say, makes a cluster of six who are doing, ready to do the supervised practicum course, any particular one, uh, and attach them to a academic counselor who may then have the discussions together. So it is not that it is a one time thing. You please again get in touch with the study center coordinator and uh, find out about the way ahead. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, namaste. My name is Akhila. I'm from Hyderabad. I have applied for MSCFT and my study center is in Vijayawada. 104 the regional center but i haven't uh, got any response from that center i have tried number of times regarding the study material or when to submit the assignments or how can i approach this uh, course and how to pursue it further can you please guide me for this there is no point of contact also for the study center ma'am i want to reply to madam's question madam akila's question i have replied to your a message also your point of contact is your regional center and this is for online counseling i request each one of you to subscribe to the youtube channel of igno regional center coaching and you can also see there are two prerequisites which you have to do before not attending a theory counseling as Pro professor neeraja said it is not a it is not compulsory to attend a theory counseling but you have to know some study material uh, you have to read some study material and get acquainted at least with the unit structure and what are the sub side headings which are covered uh, in each of the subject so that you can ask questions at the end of the section it's not like lecturing method as it is in the regular conventional education system so uh, the online counseling session schedule has a comprise of uh, comprise two events one is the pre-recorded session using the empaneled academic counselor. And the other one is the live sessions uh, uh, generally conducted by the Google Meet. And we have uploaded in Regional Center Coaching website the online counseling session schedule starting from tomorrow using the recorded session. And you can follow us in our tweet also uh, and so that uh, you will be aware of what you have to do. The recorded session can be uh, viewed at your leisure. Okay, whereas for the live session will be time bound and it uh, and it has to be uh, in the specific time using the Google Meet. And uh, I, as uh, if you have been listening or missed also, the session will be available in uh, uh, in a video format after the conduct of the session. I encourage uh, each one of you who are present 
to visit the guidelines available in regional center coaching website you can customize it for you it is generally for all learners of igno regional center coaching it can be customized to specific program and specific region also so you are welcome to do it so assignment response generally we have the new normal situation of submitting it in the google form that is you have to hand write uh, the assignment response has to be hand written you have to scan it and you have to upload it in the uh, google form uh, and the second is you have to submit the or else you have to submit the hard copy of the hand written assignment response at the study center and uh, with this actually we will take the session uh, the discussion at the end of the session because we have another three four session to uh, go ahead and then it will be followed by the summing summing up also and after that there will be a discussion session involving us so now i call upon dr s vijay raghavan ard uh, to share about the assignment response the supervised practicum of msc cft and the pgd cft program and also the term and examinations over to dr s vijay raghavan good afternoon madam um, respected our guest from headquarter uh, dr amiteshwar ratra madam and dr neeraj chada madam and the regional director my colleagues and my dear student so good afternoon to all of you so this msc cft is a life skilled program It's a very great program which is offered by Igno, and a lot of students they have admitted in this program. But however, some students from the conventional mode they did not study with the distance mode. So we are inducting the, that uh, student. The induction meeting main aim is that inducting the student to the uh, distance mode of education. So you know. very well igno is a central university and we have lot of programs the most of the program is employment oriented program we are offering and we have lot of study centers and nearly 56 regional center across the india we are having to cater catering the students so this uh, first of all that uh, uh, i am going to talk about the assignment and examination and supervised uh, practicum related aspect here as assignment is a internal assessment you know the uh, assessing the student uh, two way we are assessing one is internal assessment another one external assessment the internal assessment we are doing by using the assignment the assignment can be hand written by the candidate and it can be submitted to the concerned study center where they have admitted in that study center they can uh, uh, able to submit the assignments so here and uh, now due, due to the covid situation last two years we have uh, offered that the assignment can be submitted through the google link also so lot of regional center they are doing that a candidate can write the assignment by self and then scan the copy to be submitted through the google link and then we are later we are forwarding the assignment to the concerned study center for evaluation so assignment question paper which is available in the igno website the candidate is able to uh, uh, get the assignment question paper session wise and they can able to answer the assignments so this is a weightage for 30 percentage of weightage for assignments uh, once this assignment is evaluated and the grades has been entered by the study center through the online portal that the hard copy of the assignments in case that is a hard copy of the assignment it should be handed uh, it is it should be handed over to the concerned candidate so by using the remarks so whatever the assignment whether it is good or not good and how they have written how they can improve all the, the uh, academic counselors they can able to remark so accordingly the student can able to correct uh, their uh, response in future and assignment is a one of the heart of the system in this distance uh, uh, mode of education so uh, for example while you we are writing the assignment your handwriting also the scale of the handwriting also will be increased 
and also you are while writing the assignment you are reading the subject and you are reading the acad academic knowledge so that will be very useful for uh, your career uh, point of view and uh, next week we can see that uh, term and examination the theory examination we are conducting june term and examination and december term and examination annually two times we are conducting so for that for june term and examination before three months the link will be open you can see the www.igno.ac.in similarly december term and examination the examination form can be submitted through online mode uh, each course uh, 200 per course the payment also can be done uh, through the uh, online mode itself and late fees we are having 1100 rupees so most of the candidate should not go for late fees before they can submit the uh, exa uh, examination form and i am and also uh, before submitting the examination form the candidate can able to submit the assignment each course one assignment can be submitted uh, that is a mandatory so the examination center uh, uh, throughout the india the candidate can able to write the examination wherever they can uh, choose the examination center they can able to write the examination it not necessary where they have admitted uh, region throughout india they can able to write the examination and then uh, so we are declaring the result within 45 days after completion of the terminal examination this is a very uh, fastest way so we are declaring the result also uh, result declaration is incorporated with the assignment marks assignment 30 percentage and theory 70 70 percentage of mark total 100 percentage of mark uh, so that is needed so here uh, next i can see that my uh, earlier uh, they have told a lot of information about a uh, supervised practicum for this msc cfp program so it is also two level we are evaluating one is the internal assessment of the supervised uh, uh, supervised practical records next the external evaluation the internal evaluation which is carrying 50 percentage of uh, the marks so that internal evaluation one guide is needed approved academic counselor is uh, is needed and they can evaluate that uh, that uh, practicum records the evaluation mark is 50 percentage then external evaluation the practical records to be sent to the scd then scd will evaluate for external evaluation another 50 percentage total it is a uh, each evaluation 50 plus 100 percentage here uh, 40 percentage of marks is required to pass the uh, practicum uh, records 40 percentage is needed in each uh, evaluations if suppose that below 40 percentage of mark you have tied then you have to rewrite the practical records so that is the thing and uh, it is this program is uh, highly skill based is a counseling family therapy which is job oriented and it is very good program so we are offering and our uh, uh, our program is recognized by the all the council ugc recognized and uh, there is no problem you can be able to get the job in uh, uh, india and also abroad and you don't have any problem and if you have any doubt for doing the pro uh, program or back any any uh, clarification you can raise the question at the end of the uh, session so thank you thank you very much now i call upon dr vt jalaja kumari ard ignu regional center kochi to share about the internal and external assessment internship and project report over to dr jalaja kumari
Hello, ma'am, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm sharing. Let me share the screen first. Respected Nirja Chadha, ma'am, uh, dear uh, Professor Amadeshu Rudra, respected regional directors, my dear colleagues from Regional Center Coaching, and dear leaders of PGD CFT and MSC CFT. Uh, good afternoon, all. Madam was uh, Nirja Chadha, Madam was uh, clearly, clearly delivering all the details regarding the program, course wise and other matters, which is specifically mentioned in my title, that is internal and external assessment provisions. And my colleague, Dr. Vijay Rakhman, was telling about assignments. So sometimes you may feel that uh, the points I am telling will be uh, a repetition. But as a student, of a beginner student, and a new student of the system, uh, definitely we think that our repetition will be an enhancement for you to get clarification regarding the matters of your program. So, I will uh, tell you once again about the internal and external assessment uh, system of IGNU, especially for this MSC CFT, PGD CFT program. Generally, uh, these, these are the uh, mechanisms we are adopting for internal and external assessment. Assignment is a common thing. Practical for some of the programs which are having practical components and some other programs have internship, some programs have project and um, some programs may have supervised and unsupervised practicums, field works for internal assessment. And for external assessment, time and examination theory is common for all. For the uh, programs, which is having practical components, how time and examination practical, then uh, there will be assessment of their practical works, means the final reports of internship project. And some internship projects have Viva OC and uh, field work, journal, workbook, etc. how to be uh, also evaluated internally and externally. And some programs have Viva OC that already I told. And for specifically our MSc CFD program, as mom told, there are eight theory purpose in the first year, uh, five theory papers are there, M MCFT 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and the supervised practicums of each and every program of these five. And in second year, one elective is there. Uh, and two other theory papers are also there, six and seven. So totally, there are eight theory papers. So the students may please uh, be informed that you have to write eight assignments. Totally, for this MSc CFT program, eight assignments. For PGD CFT, five assignments. That is the internal assessment component. And what is the importance of this internal assessment component? And what is the weightage? These two matters have been delivered already by Dr. Vijay Rakhman, so I am not uh, going to focus on that. So totally eight assignments are there for you for MSC CFT program and five for the uh, PGD CFT students. Like that, there are uh, again eight supervised practicums for MSc CFT students. I have already told you for each uh, theory component, theory papers, theory courses, there is one supervised practicum component. Madam was also clearly telling it, Nirja Chadda, Madam. And for PGD CFT students, there are eight, uh, there are five uh, supervised practicum components. And one project is also there. So these will come under the internal assessment. Why I am telling this one is that you know that assignments are internally evaluated. Assignment marks will be uploaded uh, by the study center and uh, that will be validated by regional center and it will be uploaded to the student evaluation division at headquarters and it will again it will be reflected in your grade card. 
so that is the internal assessment mechanism of uh, assignments then the supervised practicums already it is told by mom but once again i am telling you that you have to uh, prepare the supervised practicums with the help of the uh, guides and the internal mark component along with the supervised uh, practicum files will be sent to headquarters for external assessment that part i will tell later so there will be an internal assessment for supervised practicum also like that students are preparing synopsis for project in that part also there will be a consideration from the supervised guide so these are the things for internal assessment for uh, msc safety students if we look at external assessment part term and examinations for all the theory papers like that practicum reports i already told internally and externally this will be evaluated external evaluation is done by the school itself and the mark will be uh, sub submitted in the student evaluation division so at first we are giving the internal marks from the study center itself and the uh, all together the internal and external mark will be tabulated and that will be given to sad so that external component part will come uh, like that the project you are preparing in the second year of msc cft there is definitely an external uh, evaluation at regional center so the students may have to submit your uh, final project report of msc cft at their concerned regional centers and where the uh, report will also be assessed and along with one project yoc will be there so both these components will come under the external part hence i have to tell you about the internship uh, uh, process and how you have to do the internship In, uh, means the internship is your supervised practicums here for msc cft program the internship is supervised uh, practicum madam already told you that the guide, uh, who should be the uh, internal supervisor means the component is named specifically named supervised practicum that itself is telling you that there should be a supervisor so with the help of a supervisor with the supervision of a experienced person that work has to be done and each indian is required to undergo training under the guidance of a supervisor that supervisor means should be a counselor or a family therapist with requisite qualification at least 5 years of relevant work experience and these supervisor have to be approved by the school nirja chadama and uh, madam schooli uh, uh, pratra madam is also here so the already approved academic counselors can be engaged with at the same time if you want to have one supervisor uh, other than that of the already approved academic counselor the by date of that person can be sent to the school and prior to the starting of the works of the uh, practicum that uh, person has to be approved if you are selecting from an outer source definitely that person has to be approved by the school at headquarters like that the internship can be conducted at the uh, approved government or private hospitals institutes school rehabilitation center health care remand home family garden center child garden center or any such allied settings including community and neighborhood so you, uh, on these places you can select as per your convenience where you have to do your internship then at what time you have to do this or commencement of the internship how before the allotment of the supervisor or the guide for the internship the program study center or the in charge of the study center where uh, the coordinator should verify that the student has cleared the first year courses and submitted the second year assignments and supervised practicum files this is the very much um, important requirement for msc cft program and for pgd cft program uh, one uh, course code is there mcft l8 that is a journal for pgd cft program and uh, this msc cft program 
students may ensure please that you have completed all the theory papers and the assignment of second year papers because in the second year uh, courses the assignment is prepared while the assignment is prepared you will be thoroughly going through the activities uh, related to the supervised practicums so this has to be done then the supervisor should be uh, eligible master's degree in any of these disciplines human development and family studies child development human development psychiatry mental health and social psychology psychiatrics work clinical psychology and allied fields with at least 5 years of experience you, you can submit your assign uh, this uh, reports this internship reports or uh, supervised practicums at your study center and that will be uh, given internal marks and finally that has to be submitted to the headquarters internship report at student evaluation division indira gandhi national open university maidanmari this is the thing i have to share with you regarding the submission of the internship then the evaluation that has also been already been uh, described by madam nirja chadda that these reports comprise 50% of weightage and um, both the internal and external evaluator will means internal evaluation 50% and external evaluation 50% in that way that will be evaluated then the next thing is our project project for msc ct program in the second year before uh, engaged with the project work students may have to prepare the synopsis or proposal we can call it proposal for the project work or synopsis for the project work and how should be it it should have it should be in the form of uh, having with a title an introduction that introduction a title should be there first then uh, an introductory part and that introduction may include statement of the problem justification rationale all these things i think that if if i am telling very elaborately at this moment you may not be able to remember and uh, it will not be digestible for you in detail but there is a handbook for our project work at the same time for your internship matters there is a uh, project uh, one, one manual you can go through that patiently at the relevant time and find out what are the things for that but you remember that before the uh, processing or the work you have started for the project you have to prepare one project proposal and that has to be approved by the project guide then that project guide or the dissertation supervisor has to have a phd degree in any of these disciplines the disciplines are mentioned here human development and family studies child development human development psychiatry mental health and social psychology or clinical psychology and allied fields allied fields to the above mentioned uh, areas with at least 5 years of teaching experience in the particular discipline at the university or college level means that a teacher uh, level experienced person can only guide you that again i am telling you that you have to take uh, ensure that the guide is an approved person approved academic counselor of igno or a person who has taken approval externally from uh, the school directly and the, the student can submit the bio data of that particular person as per your convenience you are selecting for uh, getting approval from the school this project dissertation uh, uh, work finally uh, submitted by you uh, is the A, a, a compulsory component for the completion of your program. So the program in charge will consider this strictly before permitting you to start your dissertation work. Here also we may uh, ensure that you have completed all the theory and supervised the practicums before doing the um, project work. Before engaging with the project work. So only after completing the theory components, theory uh, courses. and the supervised practicum components a student can engage with the 
project work that is that has to be ensured by the um, study center coordinator and the or the program in charge of the lsc this uh, project dissertation work approved by the supervisor approved supervisor uh, can be submitted at a regional center if the approved if the supervisor is found as not approved you may please remember that your dissertation work or report will be considered as null and void so you do not uh, one more point is also there at the time of the submission of your project final work you may please enclose the duly filled in performance certificates and the annexures given in the manual of your project work so go through the project manual before finalization and submission of the same at the concerned regular centers the framework is also given in the manual so at uh, this time i think this may not be an apt time for uh, telling elaborately about the framework of your dissertation work that is given in the manual you can refer it and uh, thus uh, the copy countersigned by the uh, lsc coordinator or the program in charge will be submitted in the regional center concerned once again i was i am telling remembering you uh, reminding you like that so this point is also very important students are advised not to pay any fee or remuneration to the dissertation guide or supervisor and because the university has provision for paying remuneration to the guide and in the uh, uh, manual there is a format is also given for remuneration bill you can uh, the academic counselors approved or the supervisors definitely they will find it out because all these documents are with the study center coordinator or program in charge and they will process it and they will uh, uh, follow up for the thing at uh, regional center consent so you don't worry about it there is no responsibility for you to pay the guide fee and from your side to the guide this is also an ethical matter regarding your igno and uh, remember that also so these are the uh, points i was just uh, reminding you in continuation of the points given by nirja chidama and if you have any query regarding all these matters regarding the internal and external assessment mechanism of msc cft program and pgd cft you can raise your questions at the session of uh, discussion that's all thank you all uh, for your uh, patient here let me stop my sharing first may i uh, make a small intervention uh, a small addendum to the wonderful presentation just now uh, from dr jadeja kumari uh, one little uh, additional information is that though the student may select uh, an expert under whom uh, he or she wants to do the internship or the dissertation the approval the qualifications have been listed in the presentation just now the approval is not given directly by the school the process to be followed is the same as that for an academic counselor of any other course so earlier it should be was the paper cv and uh, photocopies of the qualifications now it's all uh, online so once again uh, the expert would need to upload on that portal online uh, academic counselor and panel in portal so the study center as for any other academic counselor's approval the study center would forward it to the regional center the regional center with its recommendations would then follow it to the forward it to the headquarters and then we come into the picture in terms of uh, acting on it so uh, please don't send it to us directly uh, send it through the uh, regional center thank you friends you are listening uh, to the various session related to the program of study of msc cft now there is something always a soft skill or a life skill which is more uh, essential for a distance learner and this concept has been introduced for the past two three session based on the advice given by uh, the social welfare Dep department of the state of kerala the world health organization has defined life skill as the ability for adaptive and positive behavior that in a, enable the individuals to deal effectively with the demands and challenges of life so many a time we feel one will cross a challenge the other one gets stuck 
there is a blame game how and what is expected when it comes to life skill for a distance learner is what we are going to talk about in this session Mom, you are muted, Mom. Uh, Dr. Dorothy, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Honesty, the various life skills which I will be sharing for essential for a distance learner are honesty, taking one day at a time, the persistence, the expression of interest, steadfastness, and the peer interaction. I'll just highlight on each one of it. First, I'll take on honesty. It's honesty to the peers, to the authorities, to self, to be genuine in relationship, in admitting faults, and should not have a blame game. There should not be any suppression or oppression because an, a heterogeneous learner will come for study with IGNU, and there should be openness. And uh, as far as the various uh, messages which you have been seeing, uh, you will be saying, I am the administrator, I am the coordinator for this session. IGNU does not authorize. You, we have one coordinator, that is the LSE coordinator, and we have the assistant regional directors or the assistant directors at each of the regional center. And the best way to relate uh, to the regional center is by email, because there will be a record of what is the message which we are receiving and what is that what we are uh, asked of what to give to give get a reply so when it becomes to honesty with, to the peers it means uh, uh, to the authorities especially when it comes to expressing your problem and also to be yourself many a time we do not fulfill the prerequisites for example the one simple uh, uh, the honesty life skill which we encounter is they, the students won't fill in the examination form, but they will say they have not received the hall ticket. So uh, that is one ins instance. Another one is when you are there is peer interaction for studying and the, the uh, learners are away from the institution, from the teachers, from the learners uh, among themselves and also from the regional center and they are studying from their home amidst the social, personal and family commitments. Many a time there will be help among the students, but please be genuine in the relationship. In other words, one small example is if you are borrowing somebody's rough copy of assignment response, do not copy as it is. You can get guidelines, but you please do also ensure to return it back. And the in admitting false blame game, etc., comes when you are in the progress of study. And when always remember when for igno problems, there is always a suppression. And many a times of late, we are also having this student complaint related being oppressed or suppressed by elderly people, or sometimes by younger one, the elder ones are complaining. So please do not oppress, please treat each one as individual. Everyone in uh, economy of life, uh, each one is unique and each one has one contribution uh, for existence as a learner in PGD CFT and uh, MSC CFT and there should be openness also. The next one is taking one day at a time, have time management. Many a time our leisure time of seeing view uh, TV or see, uh, serials or checking WhatsApp messages uh, as a pastime may have to be sacrificed for the sake of study. And if you have observed, uh, we can we can uh, talk over the phone and listen to the music coming by the ear. And we can listen to what others are talking in the next room, even though we are writing something. But this that is not possible when you are studying. When you are studying, you have to put in some efforts and do not worry about tomorrow. Please take one day at a time. Many a time when you are fulfilling the prerequisites, the roads may seem to be very dead end. But when you go to the dead end only, you will know whether to take the right turn or left turn. Similarly, also in the life journey of studying with the IGNU. So you please take one day at a time and do not worry about tomorrow. That's what I will say. Please fulfill the prerequisites. 
and take one task at a time. Many a time when we see the assignment response being lower scored is that the first question will be of the first uh, subject and the second question will be of the second subject like that, etc. And then each one will go to different academic counselor. And later when the students say that we have written the best, etc. and it's not studying, please be aware that there's no re-evaluation for assignment response. But still, when multiple complaints come, we do check and we observe that the students has stapled the various assignment answers she has handwritten into one and submitted for her own courses, which she has named it. So please take one task at a time and always remember little drops makes a mighty ocean, meaning small effort. Say you may be in the process of writing the assignment response. If you have been listening to the program coordinator, they told it's already there in the website, the assignment question. So don't aim to download the assignment questions only when you're going to write. Download it and keep it. And we have been telling that the YouTube channel of IGNU Regional Center Coaching has pre-recorded videos under the MSC CFT playlist. So please subscribe, please copy the link and keep it. And keep a record of what you have to do and what you have done. And all problems have a solution. Be bold enough to take the process targeting a solution. Many a times we think of what to do, what not to do. Either it will be starters or blame gamers or never giving, uh, what is it, never uh, targeting the solution or undergoing uh, the process. So all these are, um, what is it, it's not expected to be a life skill for a distance learner. When there is a problem, remember the regional center is backing you up. Maybe may not be holding your hand, but we are the invisible shadow behind you. And it will be from your admission till the uh, completion of the program of study. But what you have to do, you have to initiate an email telling your program. And when you are writing an email, please write the enrollment number, the correct number. Please copy it rightly. Please mention the phone number which you will pick up. And also uh, the email ID also you just uh, write it because when we take a, take a student query, we generally take a printout or forward. Many a time it's very, uh, uh, the, the forwarded mail do not have sometimes the access for replying immediately. So you keep it and do at least something, one task at least related to a study uh, in a day. And the next one is persistence. Please do not give up giving it's over only an individual give up see many a time msc cft and pgdcft pro learners they are going to be counselors uh, in the future but many a time they also need counseling not to give up so when you are given it's time to give up you just remember that it is time to restart again and it the igno studying is more like slow cycling so even if you slowly cycle, the finish line matters, but the maximum period of study has to be visioned uh, when you are uh, doing your cycling, slow cycling process. And little effort also matters. Please help each other. Yes, very well, fine. But do not, uh, uh, what is say, give uh, your handwritten assignment response to somebody to be benefited. And at the end, after the session, you observe that it is not, uh, your marks are not there. When we study it, we will know that the assignment response is not received. And then people will be telling, we are only coordinating, etc. No, other than the coordinator at the host institution, LSE, there is no other coordinator nominated by IGNU uh, among the students to represent each other. And please be optimistic. When you are to, yes, today I could not fulfill my time. Yes, it's not going to be the same when, when I'm going to face the tomorrow. So tomorrow may have the new challenges. At the same time, there is uh, time for me to study also. Always remember that one story which they say one person has put uh, some pebbles inside, some uh, or sand inside inside the bottle. And then everybody, even the teacher showed it to the class. 
So they said, yes, everything is full. There is no other space. But when they poured the water, there was still space. So it is life is like that. Definitely amidst uh, the studying process or the pursuing uh, education qualification, amidst your career, your personal, your social, and also your official responsibilities will give challenge, but still view the hurdles as stepping stones to move ahead in the learning process. And then expression of interest. Many a time body language, yes, we do understand what you are trying to say. Yes, but express yourself. We've, many a time, uh, we in IGNU especially, we are using an inclusive classroom examination hall method, meaning that e even a, a differently labeled learner can be integrated into the classroom uh, for examination purpose, unless otherwise the individual expresses of what the best preference, whether she wants to sit uh, separately and write the exam or be a part of the entire class. And uh, there will be special provisions even made uh, like a two uh, desk attached to a uh, individual with differently labeled, all that we will be providing. But still, if you want specific, exclusive uh, benefits from the regional center or from the host institution where you are visiting or the examination center where you are going to write your exam, you have to express yourself. Be genuine and do not threaten or link with job profile. Many a time, the employed learners, the adult learners, they do only say, do you know who I am before telling their problem. And in the help desk, be polite when you have a complaint also and you think you are right. It is a process which we have to undergo to target at a solution rather than of what we have to do of when we encounter the problem itself. So solution matters a lot. And the inclusive integrated classroom, please do is being followed. And please do not make any comments against or uh, the, the host institution or against the person who are being benefited because of this inclusive integrated classroom or examination all. And nature call is uh, is for every living human beings i should say and know where the toilet is when it comes to when you are entering the examination center or the host institution or the regional center and personal hygiene products are not sold in regional center or study center so you if you are in need of diaper or pad which you have to change during the process of writing your examination or you have to uh, uh, during the uh, process of your time of visit, you have to bring your spare with you. And also to request to exercise the element of discretion to accept beyond date, last date, is bested upon the coordinator. So just put a word that is where the element of uh, writing a letter or comes in. So you just say, uh, say I, I because of some, uh, 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 some reason, I could not submit it or upload it. Please accept it uh, beyond the last day. Yes, even though we say Indian standards time, we also call it Indian stretchable time when, it, when we are deciding upon the closing down the last date, I should say, uh, for uh, submission of soft copy and all. But still, we cannot keep stretching beyond a week or 10 days because all are linked as you are listening. The process of evaluation is also linked with declaration of the result there by the degree. And there will be special need or medical need when there is uh, some change in the uh, physical situation uh, in your body. And if you are expressing it, it will be, the need will be met. For example, you are a, a healthy individual, but you are met with an accident while stepping down your staircase and there's a broken fracture. Get a, fulfill the requirements of what you have to fulfill, uh, have the special need addressed at the examination center and we will be uh, glad to accommodate you for the examination so and please bring a spare rest if there is uh, there is some physiological changes in your body which will uh, uh, which will need the same and please do not wear very tight dress when you know that you have to change your uh, dress due to your physiological uh, situations and the next one is steadfastness. It is determination to uh, move ahead or move, take one step at a time 
which will help you and dedication or sacrificing other leisure time activity also come and uh, commitment that is to do the best also uh, matters a lot and here i just to remember a small uh, story uh, it is uh, 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 i mean the donkey cause of it wants to dispose it so the donkey is thrown into the pit and the boss of the donkey is trying to put the mud over it but the donkey every time it remembers the past so you have to have uh, the uh, it, it, i will tell the narrate the story and get back to what i can learn uh, from as a uh, as a life skill uh, person so uh, it is the every time the boss is throwing mud on the donkey the donkey will jump on the mud and and it will reach to a point that it is uh, able to see eye to eye to the boss and say i know you will rescue me so the donkey was always remembering the positive things of the uh, the owner of the of it and he was only thinking that by mistake he has thrown into and every time he is throwing mud even though with a bad intention he was uh, helping the uh, donkey was thinking that he is trying to climb up the next step and the donkey also did its part this is where it comes to commitments you as a learner have to do your part yes there will be dead all the deadlines will be uh, posing as a boss throwing mud on the donkey so every time some deadline is there please fulfill the prerequisites and try to climb to the uh, do the best in that and focus on the spin off benefits many a time we always feel that we can uh, do better we can sacrifice our leisure time activity we can uh, what what is say we can drop some time from the leisure time activity to study if if focus on the spin off benefits so what is this program going to help you in uh, personally and officially and also economically will help you to focus more on successful completion of the program and peer interaction Necess it is a necessity in distance learning yes and uh, you have uh, because you are away from the institution you are away from each other and you are away from the regional center also sometimes you have to travel even to the learner support centers yes but do not join peer who are demanding or threatening and do not join peer who oppress or suppress others whether it is for fun or for in a, a very what is a um polite manner sometimes people talk so softly bad things please do not join do not join peer who initiate unrest and be cautious of whom you are associating because even when the dti do not have any confidential prof profile of individual learner because the uh, many a time when we uh, uh, when we have some meetings etc and face to face now the new normal situation has eased this uh, distance also and you can come in at uh, any time and they they will be telling in the examination hall the one who is sitting in the front he took my mobile no we won't be knowing who is sitting even though uh, the enrollment number is there we won't be knowing what, what is the profile etc so when you are coming to the examination center or visiting any of the lsc or regional center your belongings you have to take care so it is more like traveling in the train yes everybody will be there but still you have to have an eye of what you are carrying along and with this i thank you and uh, i request dr prasita gunikrishnan to uh, sum up what you have heard so far so that uh, uh, you will know the mainly the people who have reached a little late uh, will also have a uh, what is it just of what we have been listening over to dr prasita munikrishna thank you dorothy madam uh, for your presentation uh, just give me 2 minutes i will upload my presentation as well
so thank you all for listening to our induction meeting patiently i am sure you would have got enough food of thought food for thought for this uh, successful completion of your program however uh, since you have been listening uh, since 11:30 to our uh, so many sessions uh, i am sure i would just like to quickly give you uh, within 5 to 5 minutes a brief checklist of what you have heard so far just a quick so that students who have joined later they are also benefited so please listen uh, carefully uh, to the session first and foremost you need to remember your 10 digit enrollment number your program code and course code correctly uh, as an igno student you should be uh, always whenever you are communicating with your respective regional center always quote your enrollment number and your program code correctly so that communications can be smooth uh, it's always requested that whenever you write to the regional center you write, enclose your igno id card so that it is easy for the regional center to respond you back next you need to check your registration details from the igno website under student zone if you go to our igno website www.igno.ac.in click on student uh, student support and you can click on student zone and go to the registration details once you click on your registration details kindly put in your enrollment number and program code and you get your registration page in the registration page uh, your uh, name your address uh, and your course codes are given correctly so please check it once uh, at least the students who are attending here you need to check your registration details and in case there is any mistake or any change in your uh, name or any such detail which is uh, not correctly mentioned please uh, write to your re concerned regional center immediately uh, rectifying the mistake which is there in the registration status as we have already mentioned every program here has a minimum and maximum duration like your pgd cft program the minimum duration is one year and maximum you can complete your program within the maximum validity period that is 3 years and similarly for msc cft uh, the minimum duration is one uh, two years and maximum duration is 4 years so that is the duration within which uh, you can complete your program now uh, for any change in your name address phone number uh, you should always be writing to your concerned regional center along with your igno id card your id card is a very important document whether it is writing your examinations your project viva convocation or even contacting your uh, lsc or rc so definitely you all should be downloading your id card and uh, maybe laminating it and keeping it safely till the time you complete your uh, complete your program next the hard copy of the study materials are usually sent by post and this would include your program guide and your self learning materials so already i have uh, uh, mentioned the study material status you can check uh, for those students who have still not received their hard copy you can check the study material status uh, the link i already put it in the chat box otherwise you can also check the status by logging into the igno website and you can uh, and the in the top down corner there is something called study material status so from that you can check your study material status now for students who have not still received your study materials uh, we would request that you please go through the soft copy of study materials which is already available on the e gyan kosh uh, website the link was also shared in the chat box for those students you can definitely click on e gyan kosh link and you can download the soft copy of the study materials and start studying the program guide is a very important document and definitely all students before starting your course of study should thoroughly go through the program guide so you you understand the nitty gritties of the program and what is expected from the concerned program also you need to uh, correctly remember your study center your regional center your code address uh, because uh, in the chat box i was just seeing that many students were asking uh, where to contact and which is the point of contact your point of contact is definitely your regional center and your you should also be knowing to which study center you have been attached to because at the time of your admission it is the student who is opting the regional center and the study center so if the student has taken admission the student should be knowing which is your regional center and which is your study center and in case you are still not knowing about it 
please check your registration status. You check your registration status, which is available on the IGNO website, www.igno.ac.in. Kindly go to student support and click on student zone. You can click on student zone and click on registration status and know about which is your study center and which is your regional center. Also, you should be knowing about the email ID and contact number of your concerned regional center. And uh, whatever queries you have, you please address it, your, it to your concerned regional center and the study center. So learners who have now been admitted to the first year of MSA CFT program of IGNO would need to re-register for the second year also. That is, you need to pay the fees for the second year. Now, uh, MSC CFT learners, you have paid fees for the first year only. Now, before writing your examination, that is, in the, the month of April is very important, wherein you have to pay your um, April or May, you need to re-register for your second year, and that is done online. Online, the link is available on the IGNO website. You need to re-register for the second year and pay your fees. Simultaneously, you also need to submit your assignments at your study center and also apply for the examinations online in case uh, the students wish to write their first year examinations in the month of june 2023 so there are three things which the students of uh, uh, pgt cft and msc cft should be doing in case they want to write your examinations in the month of june 2023 they need to submit your assignments uh, in the month uh, maybe by March or April end, they need to submit your assignments at your study center. You also need to re-register for the second year, that is pay fees for the second year. And also you need to apply for the June term and examinations online. So these are the very, very important instructions which the students should be listening carefully. So how you can write your assignments? You can download your assignment questions from the IGNO website. Uh, there is an, a download a downloads option available in the home page itself. So you can go to the downloads and, uh, and download your assignment questions and assignments have to be submitted in your own handwriting, either through hard copy or soft copy as per the guidelines issued by the concerned regional center. As I said before, the term and examination forms can be submitted online only and the online question papers have to be downloaded from the IGNO website under student zone. Again, if you go to the download options, which is available on the IGNO website, old question papers can be downloaded easily and you can go through, have a brief idea about the questions which are being asked uh, in the examinations. So once you are done with your course, but after completion of your course, the provisional certificate and the uh, grade card is directly sent by the Student Evaluation Division, IGNO Headquarters, Delhi, to your uh, address, registered address. That is the address which, which, which you give at the time of admission. SCD would send your provisional certificate and grade card directly uh, to your address after your completion of program, after the completion of your grade card. So that is one very important information. Other than that, uh, the induction guidelines, whatever we have transacted here, whatever two hours you have been, almost like two hours you have been listening to us, uh, whatever has been transacted and whatever information has been provided to you uh, in a verbal form uh, through this presentations of, by various resource persons, uh, definitely you can download the induction guidelines which, and uh, which are already uploaded on the regional center coaching website that is httprcoaching.igno.ac.in and the induction guidelines link also i had shared it in the chat box so students can access that and whatever we have said here is definitely given in a very brief form as a 12 page booklet uh, uh, in which the last four pages are definitely dedicated to the e-support services of igno that how you can access the e-support services of igno so this booklet would be very, very helpful to our learners. So many a times uh, regional centers do get queries on how to download their IGNO ID card. You can def uh, you can download uh, your IGNO ID card from the previous same admission portal which you are using, that is the through which you took admission, that is ignoadmission.samarth.edu.in. Once you log into your ignoadmission.samarth.edu.in, you can use, uh, there is something called previous admission and portal which is given on the down downward part of that link. 
So once you click on that using your username and password, you can download your ID card. So request all students who have still not downloaded the ID card to please download your ID card. And the ID card can be downloaded is password protected in PDF format. So many a times we do get queries from students asking what is the password also? So the password is the enrollment number only. So once you put in the enrollment number, you can open this PDF file. So this is how you can download your IGNO ID card. So uh, this is what I had to share as a checklist. I think I have been uh, able to give you a brief uh, uh, idea about, uh, uh, about the successful completion of your program. So it's also requested that you maintain a file of IGNO so that uh, whatever communications you are receiving or whatever is being transacted you can maintain a file so this will help you organize your uh, study better way and uh, this will also enable you in a successful completion of your program so now we uh, wind up this uh, formal uh, formal program induction meeting of igno regional center coaching so before i wind up i would request our section officer shri uh, k murli daran to kindly deliver the vote of thanks so once uh, he delivers the vote of thanks uh, st students uh, who have some discussion or who want to interact with us can stay others can uh, leave so uh, you can uh, so while uh, the interactions are there, you can uh, tell your name, uh, the regional center which you belong to, and you can address your query. So now I request our section officer, Shri uh, uh, K. Murli Dharan, uh, regional center coaching, to kindly deliver the vote of thanks. OK, thank you, madam. Good afternoon to all. The induction session of PGD, CFT, and MSc CFT learners of July 2022 is over now. First of all, I thank Dr. UC Pandey, Director RSD, and uh, Dr. Hemapan, Additional Director RSD, for their presence. I thank to Professor Neeraja Chanda and uh, Dr. Amidesha Ratra, School of Continuing Education and the Program Coordinator of MSc CFT and PGD CFT for sharing about the MSc CFT and PGD CFT program. I would like to thank all the resource persons from Regional Center Cochin. I would also acknowledge with gratitude the regional director's presence. And without the students, the session would not have been possible. The FP Live was possible due to the efforts of Sri Mohammed Ansar, AEDP, and Reshma, of Regional Center Coaching. I would like to thank one and all for their active participation. Thank you again. So those who have uh, queries uh, with us or want to ask something can be present. Others can just uh, leave the session. So in case you have anything to ask us, you can ask us hello ma'am uh, i'm dr apurva i'm from rc Ahmedabad. yes and uh, uh, i wanted to ask that when do we receive the schedule for theory or practical classes from uh, regional center or if are they all to the online session, uh, if uh, you have listened to the session uh, we were sharing that the online counseling session theory the nodal office is uh, regional center Cochin. And uh, uh, the, for the practicals, you have to visit your LSE because the, uh, the, the counselor signature, the supervisor uh, acting as supervisor needs to be affixed. So the online counseling session are of two types. One is the recorded videos, which will be uh, shared as a prerequisite for you to get accustomed to, to the study material. So generally, even though uh, the theory counseling is not compulsory, you are expected to study the study material, at least the unit structure, the topics covered there, so that when you come for the theory counseling, you can ask some questions to the academic counselor. It is not like lecture method in a conventional education system. So in order to facilitate a distance learner to accustom to the study material, first we give the, uh, the recorded videos. The, uh, the link, it is in YouTube, uh, uh, YouTube uh, links have been given 
to all the regional uh, centers yesterday evening itself and we have uploaded in the regional center coaching website also so uh, you can view it alternatively for self learning purpose you can visit ignu regional center coaching youtube channel and see the playlist we have a humpty number of videos already recorded uh, uh, online counseling session uh, the live sessions which we have held for the previous session they are uploaded so you can view it and for this session after two three session of holding the online counseling a uh, session using recorded videos will be having a live session using the google meet so based on each credit that is we, one credit is equal to 30 hours of study so four credit program you will have five sessions so the theory counseling sessions will be uh, held likewise okay ma'am so for uh, we have some uh, questions while writing the assignments so those questions can be asked during online theory classes right no uh, it uh, the based on the study material only assignment questions will be there isn't it so you have to study the study material thoroughly to answer the assignment questions yes uh, ma'am but how to the write the assignment is hand written okay assignment response has to be hand written the assignment questions which you have to download is from the regional center uh, sorry the igno main website hq website igno uh, dot ac dot in and once you download the assignment question you have to check whether it is valid for your session that is suppose you are missing the first minimum period then then you are stepping into the next phase of study then you have to be more sure of uh, whether the uh, question is session specific then it has to be hand written like how you write your examination no that's how we uh, tell it as a skill for you to write your assignment response also write your name address enrollment number the course code and also number the pages when you are writing the assignment response write the question and then write your answer it's more like a uh, question answer okay so the uh, if you are uh, see the session the live session is for 2 and 1/2 hours The maximum log in and log out time inclusive. So if you are going to ask questions beyond the theory, then the the time of theory counseling covered will be minimized. That is also there. So what I will request each one of us, including Dr. Apurva, who has raised the issue, is please download that uh, induction meeting, irrespective of which is your regional center. Available at Igno Regional Center Coaching website. So when you go to the Igno Regional Center Coaching website, on the right hand side top there is a search column. Put the induction guidelines. It will come. Already we have put the PDF uh, link uh, in the chat box also. Please study it. Don't skip any line for start uh, while you are scanning. Don't read it like newspaper. Even for writing the assignment response, please don't read study material like reading the newspaper. You have to read what you have to read to fare well in your assignment response. Or for that matter, uh, yes, ma'am. There are some uh, in the uh, during the in the assignment only there are there there is a ask a question asked that give the example, give the practical examples. So few yeah. questions are like that. So in that so practical example, example you should know you, that relates to your practical no two two credit course. Okay. So you you have to read it, and uh, uh, ma'am, you want to contribute, ma'am? Yeah, yes, thank you, ma'am. See, uh, for a program of this nature, that to a postgraduate program, uh, certainly something which is only knowledge based would not be asked. now when you have gone through the study material you have to be able to think beyond otherwise see it is an open book thing if you ask directly only knowledge based questions you will simply take it from the study material that is now it how it is meant to be ideally now you have seen the section or the part of the unit on which let's say a particular question or uh, a part of the question is based go through it but uh, the rest you would have gone through now again knowing our mentality we want to score well so from exam point of view this is the question i want to write the answer so go through the relevant content 
then close the block, put it away, write the answer. You need to be able to think about it. This is a postgraduate level program. If I'm saying uh, an example of uh, give a situation in which a child uh, is throwing a temper tantrum or give we've supposed talked about CBT. That is the uh, uh, one of the modes of intervention therapy in counseling and family therapy and ABCD. So give a situation in which you need to we have already explained with example the what is an antecedent, what was the behavior, what was the consequence and so on. So if we, we want you to give an example from your experience, you have to be able to do that. It is expected of you. So don't expect that it will be a give a definition of this and you will copy the definition and that will be your assignment. For this program of study, you have to be able to think beyond just the specific definition, the knowledge which is there. You have to exhibit the understanding. So when you we are asking you to give an example from your daily life or in the Indian context, you have to be able to think, reflect, reflect your understanding of that concept by giving that example and then discussing it. So you will not find this bit perhaps directly in the content, but this is what you are expected to do. And if you want to, when you are a professional, like when you go to a doctor, the doctor has to have all everything on the tips. Can't be looking up the medical books in the presence of the patient and uh, saying, okay, this is it, this might be the cause. Similarly, you are in the field of mental health and well-being. You have to have the understanding of the various concepts. So this is what is expected. This is not, you may ask, and the academic counselor says, yes, this is the example and you go home and you copy it down, then you, that understanding will not seep in them. So you have, you are expected, there are some questions which are knowledge based, but many which have a component of understanding and application, you're expected to do that. So read the relevant concept, think about it, write the answer and rough, get back to the content, see whether you've uh, covered all the points. If anything is left out, read it again, again, close the block, again, write it in your own words. Because at times now the material, uh, the statement given in the content, that is the study material may seem superior somehow. That my English might be clumsy. Um, I'm not very well versed. This sounds better, will fetch me more marks. No, it doesn't work that way. The assignment is graded, uh, your marks are awarded seeing how much you've understood of the knowledge which has been imparted through the blogs. So please let it be in your own words. So therefore, it is better to close the block, close the, in Ignu Palace, the books that you'd received are called blogs. So close the block, put it away and write the answer in your own words. Of course, it is open book. So you can, of course, go back, check whether you covered all the points. If anything is missed out, again, close the block, write in your own words. Having done that, you'll find that once you've done the assignment, you're half ready for the exams. Yeah, that's it. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, that was very helpful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and when you're reading the study material, you no, know, first you survey what is this book, whether the course title is correct, and then uh, which you start. Yes, uh, the, uh, first year may this is whether it is the second course or the third course. Survey and then question question what you are going to read first whether you are going to treat all the unit structure and if you ask me my personal experience if i am a igno student i will read all the unit structure first the, it will be it's the first page so that i will know in, in the course why i will know what it is and then uh, each uh, in the each unit what it is so on brief uh, surfing of the study material is is a prerequisite to show interest and even though in the online counseling schedule, we have put research methodology as the first subject with the base to say that the subjects will be, uh, I mean, statistics based also, plus the next subject is just about our family life. So uh, as relating to the daily life also. So survey, question, then read, then third, and then recall, and then review. 
see madam was telling you close it and write it that is reviewing what you have learned and you are reflecting it when you are reflecting something to apply for application oriented questions two things are necessary one is sympathizing with the case which has been presented and then empathizing so only when you put your leg into somebody's shoes and empathize you can really write a good answer when it comes to this case studies etc and sympathizing is to get a feel you can uh, feel sympathy with a beggar and give some two rupees but to develop him economically you have to empathize and develop his skills so many other things and counseling is not just uh, targeting uh, that uh, talking time listening time is no it is beyond what is to be sustained what are the spin off benefits for the individual how best the individual can exist in the society and even if you have not received the study material please download it i am talking from the e gyan gosh soft copy of the material when you download it see for just for example i just kept it this this will tell you what are the practical components so each is guided and very much so even if you are diverting it for a very serious um, experienced person then also you will know where to limit and if you are a primitive learner because the entry entry eligibility criteria is only ug so based on that if you are very primitive to think in line of what is expected of uh, for correction that also you will be guided so please read the study material follow this step survey question read recall and review next question please uh, anybody else uh, this yeah. is uh, uh, hello you. you have to be louder ma'am hello neeraj uh, ma'am yes uh, yes neeraj uh, hemant Yes, uh, yes. The, Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, I have taken admission for PGD CFT uh, in October twenty twenty two, and I oh. have received a mail. I'm based in Cochin, and I have received a mail stating that uh, for all the queries, um, I need to yes. get in touch with. Yes, have been attached to Trivandrum Regional Center. Yes. That stands valid, ma'am. Work okay. center notification when it comes with that that uh, related to that, it will be done. Still, regional center question is the nodal for conducting the theory counseling session, ma'am. Okay, that and that stands valid. We, I think, we I have replied to your chat box question also, yes. and we have sent specific letters to individual learners also, including you. Right, right, ma'am. Yes, so, uh, that stands the... valid, ma'am. You can write your examinations anywhere uh, to your nearest place of stay. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Okay, ma'am. For that, I have. Irrespective of uh, where you are, examination center can be at any LSC. Okay, and for viva voce and uh, the practical, uh, the project, it right. has to be at the regional center to which you are attached. Practical uh, skill, you have to go to the LSC where you are attached. Uh, but ma'am, like from Cochin to Trivandrum, it will be very difficult. No, that is what already we have addressed your problem, ma'am. We told it as of now there is no LSC activated for CHF. Uh, uh, that CHF has been closed. That's why we have shifted. No, you are repeating what we have expressed in writing. That is not ethically correct, right? That is uh, what a counselor has to be. Counselor has to know what we have, what communication has been received so far. And should not pretend as if no communication has been received. Ah uh, no, ma'am, I haven't okay. received no, no, any. You have received mail. the letter. But, uh, you have received the letter. No, no, I uh, haven't. No, uh, it is there, ma'am, in the website. Also, if you have not received, please check your uh, office address or communication. Sure. And if you send it to RC Kochan, any queries, the okay. same thing valid. So, uh, so for the and we are in the process of uh, uh, finding out uh, one more LSC also. It will take time. As of now, you are attached. The there is no LSC under us. Okay, ma'am. So, so, so okay. for getting uh, si uh, signature, I have to go to Trivandra for the practical. What you are listening so far, ma'am? For practicals, where you have to go? You have to go to your LSC. Where is your LSC? You have to visit. Ah, it Isn't was it, it was ah. CHF. Now changed it to Trivandra. So that I have to go there. It stands valid, ma'am. Ah, so, so I have to see ah, this so. induction meeting is related to uh, not study center change. Let me be very clear, because we have already specified what we have to write, whether either to Vikram ma'am or to Nirajam ma'am. 
Neeraja Hemant, madam, that madam who is a student who just raised the issue. Anything else, how you want to study, etc., or else we can Dr. call it at the end. So, Ma'am, uh, I am from RC Cochin. Uh, I, yes. due to some personal reason, I can't attend uh, this June month exam. So, uh, is uh, can, what, that is what maximum period is there. So, okay. if you have listened to, if you have not listened word by word, what has been deliberated? Uh, that's not a problem, ma'am. What is the uh, uh, what is the yes? Let, let me complete. I got your questions. I'm just telling. First is please revisit the uh, PDF uh, file which has been sent along with the induction meeting, the okay. guidelines. So, okay, the next one is there is one minimum period and maximum period of study. If for in June you are unable to write, then you are eligible for December. But the last date you have to keep track. For December, it is generally September end. So, okay. and this will be somewhere. And with late fee also we go on. But you please attend it at, at the time uh, when it, the link is open. For example, this June, uh, Kelly, the link has been open. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Hi. Uh, I Good afternoon, ma'am. My name is Akhila. Uh, yes, the link which is uh, available on the website for the fees, which is open the... right now, when I for the fees, ma'am, exam, oh. the examination mm -hmm. which I have to register, that says that it is already expired. No, no, that is for December 2022. For June 2023, you see it correctly. Okay, okay. all right. Hmm. I will check, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You. you just wait for 10, 15 days, ma'am, and it will just uh, streamline everything. But then the whole all right. and all will be removed. All um, right. Thank you, ma'am. Regarding the assignments that you need to do, please note that if you wish to appear for the exam in June 23, then you will be attempting the assignments which are already uploaded uh, on the website for June 22 session. But those uh, who uh, do not submit the assignments by the last date for June 23 exam, and uh, in any case want to appear for the exam in uh, December 23, you will need to attend the assignments for the July 23 session, which will be uploaded by the time it's uh, time to upload those. Yeah. Then you will not be attempting to, these old ones. Yes. Adding to Madam's uh, suggestion, uh, I just have one more, uh, uh, what to say, suggestion to place. Even if you are not writing your uh, examination, please write your assignments. So that the question of uh, finding out which is your correct assignment uh, question won't come in and which is the session which you are eligible won't step in. So now that you are in the some right track, today you download it. And when it comes to writing MSc CFT assignment response, the student feedback is if you read the study material and you link it with your real life situation, you can easily write the assignment response. That is what they are telling. So it is not uh, yeah, so also the exams and it, so it is not 100% by hearting the study material. That is also the students have shared. Hi, I have one question uh, with this regard to uh, the study materials dispatch. Please introduce yourself on the regional and, center. Yeah, sorry. I'm Zainab. I, uh, my regional center is Trivandrum. Okay. So um, uh, with regard to the uh, study materials, uh, so many of us are relating in the comment box that we haven't yet received the hard copy. And the problem, uh, the difficulty with the soft copy is that it's not like it's not a, in a very legible scanned format, but it's it, it has very um, shady places somewhere where it's not very legible. So it's not very easy to depend uh, on just that for the assignment. So I was wondering, how can we know uh, whether it's already dispatched or not? Uh, so I think it was uh, Amit Ma'am in the comment sections uh, who said that we can already go to the HQ and collect the uh, study materials, but how do we so know? I never this? said if you can go to HQ. I said start I'm, I'm headquarters, the and there is a status. I, next to message, I have put it the link from which you can state the status of the study material. But it's only showing a zero. It has been showing a zero it's for the. Been but see, there are two things. One is we would have got admission somewhere in uh, August. Okay, and but the admission cycle ended only in December. 
okay and now they are consolidating and they are sending till i am sharing till you get your hard copy you can see the soft copy and study see that the two three pages which are hazy uh, can be skipped till you get your hard copy of the study material that's my suggestion that is a life skill uh, what is a experience suggestion but it's also very it's difficult for people with headquarters anyhow we will be giving a report uh, to headquarters also in that we will specify that student insist upon hard copy of the study yeah, it's very difficult for people with uh, difficult eyesight and all that yes, to just yeah, i understand ma'am I, I empathize with you and i am assuring that we will put it as a query because it cannot be solved at our end right. and is there an eta on like when is the last date that we can expect the hard copies as to submit the, the uh, center, it is not available ma'am okay uh, so uh, when i contacted the uh, mpd contact numbers from ignos website also the no, call is not email, so. send a email contacting see we in igno is a mega university okay and uh, even in regional center we have 25000 students the uh, the phone call is always uh, what is a uh, um, uh, ringing and we are answering but still in between when it is engaged the person will think that we are talking to somebody else and they they only will uh, get the objected that the, their call is not answered so please send an email and each I email, did send an email also that's the thing so uh, yeah, please send it and they will reply ma'am and as on regional center we do not have the uh, work structure of a hq but i am assuring that in the induction meeting report we will share that the student insist upon hard copy of the material. Bec there is also another reason why we are insisting on the timely delivery because um, when it's said that PG diploma uh, certificate can be provided, like the exam will be in June and you're submitting the assignments by March, we are also looking at, uh, we are lo looking forward to our career, we are also looking forward to registering i have applied for some other courses for the next academic intake in foreign universities so for that i need this before that so and your result will be declared 45 days after june ma'am and the convocation is the next convocation so immediate and if you are asking for early declaration of result then result will be declared little earlier and so in immediately in june you finish it and you land up in august in outside india for higher studies that is not possible provisional certificate itself will take some time let me let us be very logical when we are planning your next step of study either in india or outside in india all right so with regard to study materials there isn't something we can do we just have to wait you're saying i have answered your query ma'am that the schedule is not with us we will inform headquarters to put it in the website anybody else or else we got to wind up because it's more than three hours that we are on the line and uh, hello ma'am uh, myself Indraja. i'm from Aussie, uh, just have you have to question. be louder ma'am uh, yeah is it audible now ma'am hello you have to be louder. Please hold the mic or just bend towards the laptop or your mobile and talk. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Am I audible now? Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, uh, myself, Neeraja. I'm from RC Trivandrum. Just have a query about the assignment session. If in in case if our assignment is rejected in uh, any case, is it possible to submit again and within no. how many days we have to no. submit? It, it no. cannot be rejected or if you fail, you cannot resubmit it. That's why oh, from okay. first time itself, we are telling it that mm. you have to, there is no provision for re-evaluation of assignment response submitted in that particular session. And you cannot resubmit the assignment response again if it is if you get the fail mark before the completion of the session so it is better that you do your best to write it and yeah and if i just i i am not a student of msc safety or from that background 
but when I, yesterday because just to highlight myself uh, accustomed to the study material and also that i study i i read that the M mcft one okay if you are okay. studying the study material you cannot go wrong on your assignment response that's what okay. so please don't like a ug program or certificate program don't scan like this ah where is the question ah like that can i look at no it is not going to help you if you like madam was talking about the doctor so only if in in uh, medical field paramedical field there are no options also for examination and slowly that will come into this uh, courses of igno where we are dealing with human beings sir. so we cannot say i can not uh, treat cancer breast cancer but not uh, uh, liver cancer like that we cannot the uh, doctor cannot say so you have to be thorough with the study material from page to page i thought i will miss the last cover so i just wound up then only i saw for nurturance of india individual family and society this point is nowhere inside you understand it but yes. it's the essence of what i learned from mcft l001 just to talk about some program there were eight courses definitely it will take time ma'am this itself from 11th january i studied and i completed i'm just telling and this program is not still in swayam so credit transfer uh, abc all that is not possible as of now that also i want to answer i check okay, that thank you slowly things will come in what i will say is see ma'am i will just have one uh, this practicum for next subject just took it it says manual for supervised and top it says mental health and disorders so also this one it says this so if you be i do not have i studied from the soft copy of the e gangosh that's how i got the link also it what is covered in the theory is covered in the practicals but with the checklist with the checklist so that you cannot go wrong when you are writing your uh, reflection that is what and it is uh, student friendly the assignment question it's not they are not asking sophisticated things sir. at the same time they are not asking primitive questions like if family bro broken up means uh, uh, two people staying away no not like so simple also they are not asking so it will be if you read the study material you can uh, write it madam was telling make a small rough actually you know when you open the study material the margins are very big that is mainly to jot down what you have to right or, or uh, what you have understood after reading that study material okay thank you ma'am thank you so much uh, before you close practicals have to be handwritten because it is filling the blanks more like uh, okay and project has to be typed uh, even in the school and all no ma'am like that same thing only anybody else ma'am please take one day uh, that's what no take one day at a time one subject easiest subject and i feel mcft 1001 it talks about human development and family relationship to be the easiest among the eight subjects so please take it read it and then read the practical uh, subject and just re reflect upon it side by side download the question paper and then you take it pritika i have paper. a doubt i am from regional center uh, jaipur uh, ma'am yes, do we have to like in any other programs if you are offering to uh, we have to uh, we have to give the practical exam like we have to go in the lab and perform the exam in front of the supervisor in front of the counselor that came so in that in this case will will it happen or it is just about the practical files which will submit can you repeat your question once again ma'am uh, ma'am i uh, want to ask that when i was speaking i have I've, I've got the question i just want to ask the learner uh, did you attend this session from the beginning um, no ma'am from the middle actually so this was explained and you missed it Uh, there are no practical mm -hmm. exams go through the supervised practicum manuals for each supervised practicum course there is a manual this thing is also clarified there about the assessment okay thank you so much ma'am so, thank you
and better late than never the records session will be available in youtube channel of kochin please subscribe and be benefited if uh, only 27 of us are there then can we will wind up with the wish that uh, it is not just access into the program of study you as a uh, practitioner will evolve in the process of learning also it ultimately the finish line matters and even in this uh, practical oriented sub program like msc cft pgd cft uh, it is not just the finish line beyond that how you are as a counselor in your field so uh, sympathize first then empathize first and many a time you won't uh, be able to charge for what you are getting that's why you know we we have to have we will say what after so much counseling what is the wage i get it is the warmth you give to the person the aptitude towards life you give to the person the genuineness of how we are going to relate to your life uh, plus their li own life and also with life of other individuals and how you empathize with that client who comes to you as a counselor and how ultimately he can empathize when he goes to the life situation see we, we have, india has moved from institutionalizing to integrating in family setup so how you are going to make a better individual in a family that is what your a program of study is going to help you thank you and we, i thank once again professor neeraja uh, charja ma'am and uh, professor ratra for being with us and we are grateful to you have ma'am for being and each one of our uh, students who are with us thank you and over thank, thank you dr dorothy and we thank, thank you dr dorothy it's been a yes, pleasure thank you well, to dr well, dr sushni then we also thank dr veer agwan dr jayalash kumari and it was uh, you know a great session for us also to hear you all have been so thorough with these programs of study so much thank you to you all for your team and for all the efforts and wish you good luck that the program go goes well from here thank you thank you ma'am thank, thank, ma thank you thank you thank you thank you so much ma'am लीव का ना ऑप्शन का चल लीव लीव